Welcome to another week, another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Pleased to have you tuning in and got another great show lined up for you this week. David Eicholt will join us here in just a moment with HawkeyeInsider.com. Also, former Hawkeye quarterback James Vandenberg will join us. James uh, with his spot on pick, so get ready for that. And then Jeff Horner will close out the show with us. Jeff, former Iowa Hawkeye basketball playing great and current head men's basketball coach at Truman State University. You'll notice the new backdrop we had last week. Each week will be here now. We've got the microphone to match, so we've got a lot of comments online. Greatly appreciate your interactivity and communicating with me on the show, Dave at DaveOHaraSports.com or via social media at Dave O'Hara Sports. So, got the show lined up for you and laid out for you. Again, full disclosure, viewers, this show was recorded on Tuesday. It's airing on Friday night after the Hawkeyes' victory, hopefully, against Nebraska on Fox 28 right here earlier today, and now you see us here on Fox 28 tonight. So, hope you had a great Thanksgiving. That being said, I've got Joe Mershman joining us now as he does each week. Joe, first and foremost, as always, thanks for joining us. And secondly, how's everything going with you and what are you thinking about the Hawkeyes as we're going into this Nebraska game? Again, it's showing up late after the Hawkeye victory, but we record this before the Hawkeye victory, hopefully. What are your thoughts? Well, let, let me tell you, I, I have a lot of Nebraska customers and uh, they are very, very intense fans, as hyped up fans as I've ever seen. And I expect that we're going to have a battle with Nebraska, but at the end, we'll come out on top. I like the way you think, Joe. I think so, too. As long as the Hawkeyes can run the ball the way they have been, play great defense, and just play the game as they know how to play, I, I think this victory should be pretty handily won. Again, this is Aaron on Friday night, so hopefully, Joe, you and I are talking about a Hawkeye victory next week as well. Thanks again, Joe, and hope you and your family have a great Thanksgiving and look forward to catching up with you next week, my friend. Thanks, Dave. And as you can see, we're joined by David Eichel, HawkeyeInsider.com. Thanks again, David, as always, for joining us. And secondly, let's get to those picks. Man, are you basking in the glory from last week? I'm trying not to get too high or too low, Dave, but uh, it, it does, you know, get boost the ego a little bit. Everybody needs it every once in a while, especially in 2020. Uh, but things are going great. You know, a big week ahead, obviously, this week with two basketball games and the football game. So a lot of coffee and a lot of typing, but it, it'll, be a, it'll be a good week. Labor of love, that's for certain. Now let's talk about this. And again, viewers, as you know, we record this show every Tuesday, so happy early Thanksgiving to you. It's airing on Friday night, hopefully after an Iowa victory over Nebraska earlier today at noon kickoff right here on Fox 28. And then, of course, Iowa has played two basketball games already, or will have by the time you view this. So again, Iowa playing North Carolina Central and also Southern. So we're going to talk to David about all of that. So after last week's big victory at Penn State, Defense, 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 running game, running game, running game, and then turnovers, of course, as well. So, David, all the things you talked about, the Hawkeyes accomplished. So, what do we got going into this week against Nebraska? Again, this game will be played by the time this is viewed, but I got to ask you directly how are we on injuries? What has Coach Farron said, and what have some of the players said? Yeah, a couple of things that stuck out to me, Dave. Uh, first of all, uh, Koi Kronk is iffy at best starting offensive tackle Koi Kronk. He's still coming back from a back injury. So we'll see what happens there and how he progresses. But a big story to me is remember Mark Kallenberger left for the last, I think 19 or 20 snaps last week. Kirk's going to see evaluate him this week and see if he can go. If not look for Jack Plum who came in to replace him. Jack Plum will be getting his first career start. And a, a little bit of a bright spot for Iowa is Kyler Schott. Uh, is actually projected to come back. He's going to play. He's not going to start, but he's going to be in their rotation. And Iowa's offensive line has played extremely well with and without him, but getting another rotational piece, I think it's a big, big deal. And, you know, I think on top of that, Dave, something that stuck out to me, Iowa's really, I don't want to say downplaying their rivalry, but they're really kind of watching their language and watching their tone about how they talk about Nebraska and I think that they're very locked into it. And I think Nebraska on the other end as well, they're extremely locked in. I mean, they want to snap the losing streak against Iowa. So it, it's, it's interesting to me, Dave, that Iowa, you know, you look at a couple weeks ago, I said the biggest game of Kirk Ferentz era was against Michigan State, how they responded. I could say same thing about Scott Frost right now because he's coming off arguably his worst loss at Nebraska. I think there's going to be two incredibly motivated teams on Friday in Kinnick Stadium. Yeah, it is interesting, though, when you were live tweeting during the press conferences on Tuesday as we record this today, and it airs on Friday, you had mentioned how the Hawkeye defense talked about two different quarterbacks that might play for Nebraska, that might play, uh, but nobody talked about the passing game of Nebraska. So I got to believe this could be a, a, a smash-mouth football game with the Hawks trying to get their running game going, as always, and, and successfully so as of late. But it looks like Nebraska's going to want to try the same thing, it appears. 
I think the big deal, Dave, is Nebraska doesn't have a quarterback right now that's completing passes at a high level. I mean, they're throwing interceptions, they're turning the ball over, but they have some dynamic guys. People forget Wandale Robinson, I think, is one of the better receivers in, in the Big Ten. He's a smaller guy, but man, is he strong, is he elusive, and he can create some real problems. And David, I got to get in. We got to go to your predictions right away. I'm sorry to do that, but we got to get to your football predictions because we got basketball to talk about too. So give me your predictions for this week against the Nebraska game. It'll air after the game, of course, on Friday night. We'll already know the result, but let's put yourself out there. What do you got? Don't throw a pass unless you have to. Run the football, Dave. <laughs> Tyler Goodson, Makai Sargent coming off two great games. Tyler Goodson's hitting his stride. Run the football. Don't put the pressure on Petrus. For the defense, it sounds obvious, Dave. It's, it's stop the run. Uh, contain the quarterback, put a quarterback spot in Luke McCaffrey and Adrian Martinez. I think if those two things happen, I don't want to say it's a guaranteed Iowa win, but I don't see Nebraska throwing the ball on Iowa 13th in the big 10 and passing offense and the Iowa defense playing sharp. And you've got Iowa winning as do I, correct? I have Iowa winning 44 to 21. Oh, I like that even better. I went with like a 27, 14, 24, 10 prediction is what I'm going with, but I like the way you think both of us, you and me together are picking a Hawkeye victory. So let's get to basketball. I have to start off on a sad note for the Iowa Hawkeye men's basketball with, with Jack Nungy's dad passing away, Dr. Mark Nungy. So let's talk about that. Obviously, uh, Jack won't be available for the immediate future here of the Hawkeye basketball team. Yeah, first of all, my condolences to you know Jack and his family is going through that horrible, heartbreaking tragedy. Like you said, Dave, uh, I believe the funeral is set for Wednesday, so Jack Nungy is not going to be available. And Fran and Luca and a bunch of the other guys said, look, there's no rush for him to return. Take as much time as he needs. Uh, but like you said, the Iowa basketball team will be two games in by the time people watch this. And fifth-ranked Hawkeyes, I'm very excited about the season. I officially have my season prediction locked in. Hold me accountable. Tell me how wrong I am. I'm, I'm very excited, Dave. I'll, uh, if you want me to reveal those a little bit early, I can. Yeah, let's do this. We're both going to presume they beat uh, North Carolina Central and they beat Southern. So let's move into it and get about a minute. So give me your predictions on basketball, please. Bas basketball, I have Iowa going 22-5. and five. I think they go 16-4 and four in the Big Ten. I think that they get their first solo experience upside and I think the just the focus and having nation's best player uh, it's it's gonna be a big deal and I believe the defense won't be great but it'll be just enough to skate by because the offense will be the most dynamic in the country and Luca Garza is the preseason and I'm sorry not the preseason the season player of the year becomes the first Hawkeye to do so I love that and got to get those rebounds too David great stuff from you as Hawkeye as always he's HawkeyeInsider.com Dave thanks so much we'll catch up with you next week and we'll see how the predictions are looking thanks man Hey, thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. You're very welcome, and thank you. For David Eichholt, I'm Dave O'Hara. Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Back with more James Vandenberg and Jeff Horner in just a few moments. One word means more to farmers than any other. Yield. Nobody knows this better than your friend in the field, Mershman Seeds. With industry-leading seed treatments like Trepidity ST, you'll see faster emergence and more bushels per acre. Become a part of the Mershman family and see the difference in your field. Ask your dealer for superiority, Mershman Seeds. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. As you can see on the screen, my buddy James Vandenberg is joining us. James, former Iowa Hawkeye quarterback and currently with uh, CorridorInvestmentGroup.com or RBC Wealth Management. He's the quarterback. His par business partner, Billy Happel Jr., is the wide receiver. A couple of different uh, generations of football players, quarterback and wide receiver, but they got it all handled for you off the field in your financial planning future. So check them out again, RBC Wealth Management or CordoInvestmentGroup.com, James Vandenberg. James, thank you so much for joining us as always here at Hawkeye. Got to ask you very directly and put a little pressure on you here. You are becoming Nostradamus, as you're being noted on social media. You said the words a couple weeks ago by saying, oh, Dave, I'm not Nostradamus. You have nailed, almost nail on the head on every one of your picks. So you, got, you have set your own reputation now skyward with your picks. I get a lot of quotes now, texts or messages online, Dave at DaveOHaraSports.com or via social media, direct message at Dave O'Hara Sports. James, they're saying, they're recounting your words from a couple of weeks ago when you said, well, I wouldn't want to face the Iowa Hawkeyes being 0-2 right now. They have since rattled off three straight wins, and as the viewers are watching this tonight on Fox 28, they saw the Hawkeyes beat, hopefully, the Nebraska Cornhuskers earlier today at noon on this station, Fox 28. 
So what do you have to say for yourself? What, are, you, are you basking in the glow of your picks? And thanks for joining us as always, too. It sounds like it's time for uh, you to leverage up and put all your money on the Hawks then if we're going on my picks. Uh, that sounds like what needs to happen. But no, I, I, I guess I never probably got as doom and gloom as uh, what it sounds like maybe the rest of the world did. I, I from the get go, I, I think we're a really solid football team and I think we're getting a little bit better every week. And we're I mean, we're chugging along pretty good. You go to Minnesota, do what you did. You go to Penn State and do what we did um we're, we're clicking in all three phases right now yeah really uh, how how do you complain like you mentioned uh certainly i understand and a lot of fans are saying this and i agree you know they can and you said it last week james that they could conceivably be, conceivably be the hawkeyes could be five and oh uh but they're three and two and the the nice thing is again as we're talking uh, on tuesday we record this it airs on friday night so hopefully they're four and two now but the hawks when you take a look at losing the first two as we talked about tight game at losing a close game at purdue and west lafayette 24 20 then they come home to kinnick and lose a a game to their nemesis, Pat Fitzgerald and, and Northwestern, and lose 21-20. Well, we see what Northwestern's doing now, having just beaten Wisconsin uh, the previous week. And so, James, we take a look at, we've got to look at Spencer Petras because, again, the defense is doing great things. We know that. You had mentioned the running game, how well it's doing, and you mentioned being a quarterback at Iowa. The running game is your friend, as, <laughs> as you so duly noted. Let's talk a little bit about Spencer Petras. Again, without the benefit of this Nebraska game, because we're recording this show before that, Let's talk about Spencer Petras. Much has been made, and you and I have talked about the most popular guy in town is always the backup quarterback. But, hey, after all, they're on a three-game heater going into this Nebraska game. So let's talk. Let, let's let you analyze the former quarterback here at Iowa. Let's let you analyze Spencer Petras again. Much has been made about his play or lack thereof. I'll step aside and let you break this down, please. I, I, I think that argument's getting harder and harder for people on that side of the coin. I, he, he played – a pretty dang clean game against Penn state. I mean, he didn't throw for 400 yards and five touchdowns, but they didn't ask him to do that. And, mm -hmm. and people also have to understand that. I mean, there's certain game plans there's certain strengths of a team that you're playing and there's certain strengths of your own team that maybe don't require you to air it out as much. Um, at the end of the day, you want victories and we're piling them up pretty good right now. So if that means he's going to throw for 180 yards and complete 25 of 34 passes with a touchdown, Great. That's if that's the winning formula. Great. I, I, I think he's taking steps in the right direction every week. I, I think he's he's getting better, and that's all you can ask from a young quarterback. And right now, our team's getting better, and that's what's way more important than any one guy. You know, well stated. When you take a look at what Tyler Goodson has done, and then Makai Sargent coming in to spell him inside outside, and for that matter, Kelly Ivor Kelly Martin's doing well, and just anybody they seem to give the ball to. So I'll. Let's go to this in this direction. You take a look at a few passes as you've analyzed. And uh, again, going into this Nebraska game, Spencer Petras still throws a very um, fast football from short distance. So you talked about that. I would not argue, as you mentioned, too. There is a room for improvement, every player, but especially with Spencer Petras. Um, in those shorter passes, is still throwing a very hot football, as they call it. And um, as you mentioned, maybe needs to get a bit, little bit more air under the ball uh, in some cases and learning that that touch pass or adjusting to that touch pass, but Rome wasn't built in the day. So I want you to talk about the development as a quarterback at Iowa that you go through and that you've gone through and you see Spencer needing to go through. Yeah, no, these are, this is all normal. Uh, there's going to be flaws. Um, I, I think what we all have to sit here and know is that we've got the best coaching staff in the country and they watch all these guys every single day and they know a hundred times more than even I'm going to know about Spencer Petrus and the other guys that could be in that position and how he leads and what his capabilities are. And so I've got full faith that they know exactly what they're doing and, and Spencer's going to keep getting better. Has there been a hot ball? Absolutely. Has there been a bad decision? There will be more above both of those things, but that, that's not necessarily uh, something to fret on. Uh, the offense is coming together. I don't think with this team he probably needs to be John Elway, and I don't think they're going to ask him to be John Elway. And at the end of the day, we end up 6-2. and two. We're all going to be pretty happy that Central Teachers led us through his first year going 6-2. and two. So um, I like where we're trending. I, I think way too much gets made of it. Yes, once again, you go back to the hot balls, and it's just if – it's, if it's a hot ball that's perfectly positioned, nobody ever talks about this. But when it's the hot ball that's a little wide or a little behind or a little high – people want, it sticks out more. Um, and so I think you're seeing maybe a little bit of that with the hot balls, but 
it's going to keep getting better. The game will keep slowing down for him. His feet will keep settling down and we're going in the right direction, which is what everybody needs to focus on. Well stated, and let's not forget, as you mentioned, that 6-2 and two would all be in conference play. He didn't get the benefit of the non-conference schedule as you and a lot of others, and you've mentioned that in the past as well. But, James, let's do this as we close out this segment. In the next couple or three minutes, I have to ask you your memories of Nebraska uh, in your, your career, uh, and then also we need a pick from you, even though it will play the show, show well after the Hawkeyes' victory. Ahem, I'm leading you. Uh, so let's ask you any memories from you about playing Nebraska in your career, and then we'll take your pick and I'll give you mine as well, please. Yeah, they, they came into the league when I was a junior, I believe. And so they were a great addition to the league, obviously a storied program and jokingly maybe even more storied in their own fans' heads, but that is what it is. Um, it, they're, they're a good opponent. I think Scott Frost is a great coach. My, my roommate, Trent Mossbrucker, is actually on their staff. Um, so I, I get a little bit of the inside information, not really, but I, I talked to him and I know they, they think they're starting to get it trending in the right direction. We keep using that term, but uh, obviously last week they're coming off a disappointing loss. We've kind of got things going. I really like our style against their style, quite frankly, and what looks kind of a sloppy weather week uh, ahead. So I, I like our style, and, and I, I don't see anything kind of stopping our three-phase approach right now, um, and I think we're going to take another step forward this week. I like the way you think. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go more of a, even though it's a sloppy style game, I still like the Hawks either a 27-14, 24-10 type of thing. Are you thinking that Are ballpark or a little higher? Now? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're nailing everything. i got to put your feet to the fire and make you be more precise. So can you give me a score or are you not going to go there? The more I watch Sargent and, and Goodson, the more I think we just need to keep tossing it to them and handing it to them and everything else. I mean, I, I think we probably see a good running uh, performance this week when you kind of look at strength versus strength and what will our game plan will be. Perfect. So are you going to give me a score? Or am I just going to live on 20? You, you go with the scores. I'll go with the W. I agree with you, Hawks win, but I'm going to, you know, because now this is airing after the game, so we're really putting ourselves out there. So, yeah, I'll stick with my score of, uh, as I mentioned, either a 27-14 or 24-10. I'll stick with that and just know that you and I both pick a victory. But, James, always great la laughing with you, talking with you, getting your insights on Spencer Petras, the Iowa Hawkeye football offense. The quarterback, obviously you being a former quarterback at Iowa. And again, James is part of the uh, CorridorInvestmentGroup.com, RBC Wealth Management with the wide receiver, uh, Billy Happel, former Iowa Hawkeye great as well. So, James, as always, we look forward to hopefully talking about a Hawkeye victory again with you next week. Thank you so much. I know it's going to be airing a day after, so we're recording this a couple days before Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, James, and thank you so much. You as well, Dave. Thanks for having me. My pleasure as always. Back with more Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, and Jeff Horner, former Iowa Hawkeye basketball great and current Truman State head basketball coach. He'll be joining us here in just a few moments. Farming makes a positive difference in my life. I love to take care of the yards and the flowers in the garden, but I also like the opportunity that I have now that I can get in the combine and help when they need that. During the fall, one of the main things that I take care of is hauling green to the elevator or hauling it here onto the farm and getting it in the bins. Women in general just have a, more opportunities that they can show their strengths today on the farm. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, and pleased as always to have this guy join us as you see him on the screen. He is Jeff Horner, former Iowa Hawkeye basketball playing great and now current head coach at Truman State University going into year three, leading the Bulldogs and Jeff... Uh, the leader, basically, in all career and season meaningful offensive categories at University of Iowa men's basketball history. Jeff, former Mr. Iowa basketball out of Mason City. Jeff is also the former MVP or MOP of the 0506 Big Ten Tournament. So first and foremost, as always, Jeff, thanks for joining us here at Hawkeye. And secondly, how's everything going with you, my friend? Thanks for having me. So just uh, everything's going good. We got our first This is uh, game week, so we had yesterday off, and so we're just getting into our scout today. And so it's a, uh, it's a, it's a big week, and we're just excited to hopefully get to play. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for you, and you can just hear the excitement in your voice. But we're going to do a little retread from last week. You and I talked about a former player of yours from last year, last couple of years, Broderick Thomas. BT uh, didn't get drafted as we, was as we were hoping he was going to, uh, but he got a pretty nice free agent deal with the Houston Rockets. I'm going to step aside a little bit and let you talk about that process, uh, where he might have gone or prospectively you thought he might go uh, in the draft. Didn't get selected in the top 60 or the first only two rounds of the NBA draft. 
last Wednesday, again, full disclosure listeners, as you know and viewers, we record this show every Tuesday and it airs on Fridays. So Jeff, why don't you talk to us a little bit about Broderick Thomas and the process he's going through right now to get ready for the NBA, please. Yeah, we knew he had a had a really good chance. It was obviously a, a very weird year with COVID and all that. So the you know the NBA went a little bit longer, and then there wasn't any workouts, or and there wasn't really you know there wasn't summer league or anything like that. So it just seems like the NBA just ended, and they're about ready to start their season in December. So um, we we hope that he was going to get drafted. Um, you know right around 55 with the Nets. We thought that was a possibility. He then, um, they, they ended up, then ended up trading the pick um, to the Clippers, they actually took the junior college player of the year there in that position. Him and Broderick were pretty similar players. Um, and about 30 seconds after the draft, Houston called. They offered him an Exhibit 10 contract, which means that he's, um, at the very worst, he's going to go to the G League team, the Rio Grande uh, Valley Vipers for the Houston Rockets. Um, and he'll get paid a little bit more money than what, than what the G League uh, guys usually make. So he's got that on the table for sure. He's also going down there to compete um, for a two-way contract uh, mm-hmm. with the Houston Rockets. And so basically, if, if he's able to go down there and, and get that two-way contract, um, he'll make right around the league minimum. Uh, usually they do a, uh, they, they do a, you know, they're, they're doing a, just a base salary this year with that, instead of having a prorated uh, depending on how many days he's up, but um, he's in a good situation down there and he's been playing and it sounds like he's been playing pretty well. And he's just, he's excited to get the opportunity. Yeah. And you mentioned on my radio show earlier this week that, it's near a half a million dollars, and I don't want to get inside his bank account, but a nice little bump up from playing college basketball to get him rolling. And you said he's down there now, and of course we know the NBA is going to start just before Christmas this year and less than a month now, and so he's at training camp and getting ready. And uh, again, we record this on Tuesday. It airs on Fridays. So Jeff, DeMarcus Cousins now, Boogie Cousins is going to be a Houston Rocket, and I don't want to spend this whole segment talking about you know Derek and or Broderick, excuse me, and, and, and what's going on with the team. But I think it's compelling to note that all these rumors swirl whirling around in the NBA about is James Harden going to stay in Houston or leave? Is Russell Westbrook going to stay in Houston or leave? But uh, Broderick is in a pretty nice situation. If they're going to try to get the the power three as the NBA team seem to do now, where the NBA team seem to grab three stars, if you got uh, DeMarcus Cousins, he can stay healthy. That might keep Westbrook. That might keep James Harden. And you said that would be better for Broderick if they had three stars or at least the two stars in um, Harden and Westbrook staying. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, if you, if you trade a guy like James Harden, you're obviously probably going to get two or three or possibly even four guys back or draft picks, that type of thing. So, um, you know, the more guys that come in, um, you know, the, the, depending on, you know, obviously how much they like Broderick, how much they see him and in, in their future plans, you obviously want less guys um, coming in than, than you want, you know, going out, that type of thing. So, you know, obviously, like I said, you trade a guy like uh, James Harden and you trade a guy like Russell Westbrook, you're probably going to get two or three or four guys uh, coming back in. So, you know, the, the longer they can stay there, the probably – probably the better it is for Broderick. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not, because it seems like, you know, NBA stars are a little, <laughs> you know, they, they want to go different places. They want to play with uh, people that they know they have a chance to win a championship. And, uh, you know, I think James Harden is probably starting to feel that a little bit, uh, you know, being obviously one of the better players in the league, he wants to win a championship. And I'm sure Russell Westbrook is in, in this, in the same boat too, as well. Uh, you know, they're not getting any younger, so we'll see what happens. It's interesting. And uh, like I told Broderick, it's business. Um, you know, all decisions, they don't care about your feelings anymore. It's, it's all about, you know, what's best for their team and what's best for their, their product. And, um, you know, hopefully Broderick's just down there playing really well. And at the very worst, if he goes into it and plays some preseason games and, and does really well and the Houston Rockets decide that, you know, he's not for them, then hopefully he can maybe sign with another team. Who knows? Yeah, but again, congratulations to you, to Broderick, to Truman State. What a pride point that has to be for you and your program going into year three as the head coach there. And you've got games upcoming when this airs on Friday. You'll be playing already at Lewis University in Chicago. And then Sunday before we talk to you next week, again, listener, viewers and listeners, as you know, we record this every Tuesday. It airs on Fridays. So Jeff will have two games under his belt. His team will by the next time we talk to him. So Jeff, in the last couple of minutes we have with you for this week in this segment, I wanted to ask you on this show about 
what Fran McCaffrey, his players need to do to get ready uh, for COVID and what's happening with this season. You're going through it with your players at Truman State. Uh, so many games canceled, postponed, moved already, uh, either one team or the other, or uh, trace amounts or, or trace tracking is being shown on university campuses all over. And so teams are, are getting out of tournaments and, and waiting. So I would ask you this directly with Fran McCaffrey. I know things are a little different at Iowa than with you at Truman State, but what are you telling your players, which I'm sure Fran is saying the same thing? And again, let's, viewers, as you know, this show will air Friday and the Hawks will have already played um, North Carolina Central and getting ready to play Southern on Wednesday before Thanksgiving and Friday the day after Thanksgiving. And of course, the Hawkeyes hopefully have already beaten the uh, Nebraska Cornhuskers in football. So, Jeff, I'll ask you this directly. What are you going to say to your players or what have you said? And what do you think Fran's going to say to the Hawkeyes to get them ready? Yeah, we... we you know, here at Truman, we've really just talked about, you know, just be careful who you, you know, when you, when you leave, you know, the gym, because obviously us as players and coaches, we're getting tested at least once a week. I know at Iowa, I believe they're getting tested three times a week. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when you, when you leave the gym or you leave the arena, you know, just be careful about who you're around, how close you stay with someone. You know, the worst thing that that could happen is, is someone around the program, you get contact traced by somebody and then you're out. Um, and so, you know, we've taken a lot of measures and our guys have been very mature about the entire process. And, you know, I'm sure Fran's probably saying the same exact thing to, the, to his guys and whichever team can adapt the best, um, you know, who knows, maybe someone tests positive tomorrow and that person and his roommates are out and you're going into the game, you know, with, you know, possibly playing some different guys that you didn't think were going to play or start or anything like that. So whichever team can adapt the best is going to probably have the most success this season. Well stated as always, Jeff. I got to say thank you so much. Safe travels to you. Good luck in this early part of your season. By the next time we talk to you, you'll have two games under your belt already, and hopefully they're both two W's for your Truman State Bulldogs starting a season year three for Jeff as a head coach at Truman State University in Kirksville, Missouri. Jeff, former Iowa Hawkeye basketball, playing great. He joins us each week here, and viewers, as you know, you still know and love Jeff. And Jeff, I got to ask you because all my viewers are texting me, emailing me, and I, and I got to uh, joke with you a little bit here. Are we keep Keeping this beard? Is this just laziness or are you going with a new look? Got to ask you because the ladies are always asking me online about you. I got to be honest, it's probably going to come off here pretty soon. So uh, I could I could go with the excuse, no shave November, but uh, yep. honestly, I've just been a little too lazy to uh, to go ahead and shave it. And I just feel good that I can, that I can get hair on my face again after last year. So that's right. Uh, a little more hair, the better, I guess. But uh, in the end, I'm just I'm just a little too lazy to shave her right now, so we'll see what happens. Makes me, makes me look more distinguished. <laughs> well, you know, you say lazy. We all know you're busy, very crazy busy right now getting ready for your season. But that's right. As we all know, viewers and listeners, you know Jeff is cancer survivor and winning the biggest victory in life that he can, and, and good for you. But, of course, we get all the comments. And, again, listeners and viewers, we always appreciate your comments. Uh, Dave at DaveOHaraSports.com. You can email me directly or direct message me on social media as you do at Dave O'Hara Sports. So keep those comments coming. Coming, Jeff, and I'll keep you posted, all right? Sounds good. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Jeff. Safe travels and all the best. For Jeff Horner, this is Dave O'Hara. Thanks for tuning in. Also, thanks to Jeff Horner, James Vandenberg, David Eicholt, and Joe Mershman. Also, please stay tuned in just a few moments for my listings of advertisers and sponsors. I greatly appreciate their support, and please support them with your business. And also, we're an interactive show here, so please like, subscribe, rate, review. I draw a winner at the end of each month for giveaways from these advertisers and sponsors, so direct message me via social media at Dave O'Hara sports or dave at daveoharasports.com that's all from me thanks to all of you